Hello, this is Blake, and we're going to walk through creating a new avatar here at the 3D Avatar Store. So the first thing we do is we give the avatar a name. The next thing is selecting a source photo. The best source photo is the ones that look like this. On the right-hand side, there's an example. There's uh, some explaining that uh, basically describes having a front-facing photo, uh, looking directly at the camera, the face should be filling the frame without perspective distortion. It's usually done with a camera being uh, 10 to 15 feet away and uh, you zoom on the face. So here I have some images set up. So we'll open those and uh, these basically select different uh, facial feature recognition engines and this down here selects a different 3D reconstruction engine and selecting a child basically means the subject is pre-puberty because uh, during puberty a person's skull shape changes but this is a photograph of me and so I'm an adult and uh, we'll choose that engine and uh, as far as the legal right to use the photo uh, all avatars created at the avatar store are private so unless you do something to make them public, it's safe to create an avatar pretty much anyone. So selecting legal right to use my own photo. We're sending the image to our servers in Los Angeles. And they should be here in just a moment. All right, so here's my photograph. Notice I didn't have to do anything about what's in the background because we're going to uh, find the facial features. Uh, it'll do a better job and give us a better first guess if I uh, give the eye locations. So I'm going to select giving eye locations. Uh, you position the image by clicking the mouse and using your mouse wheel. So I've got it positioned fine here. And now I just click in the eyes as those images directed. And now that looks pretty good and I will proceed. At this point we're running a facial feature finder and so now here we have that result and these are where our software was able to automatically find the features of my face and as we look here we can see it didn't quite get the corners of my jawline. Uh, basically what it's doing is it's running a facial feature identification but it's also basing that or gauging that against a statistical average of human faces. And uh, since it doesn't really know where the face is at this point. So now I'm making corrections to these annotation points. These are the facial feature outlines. This will both help define where the texture map is going to be pulled from my photo to place on my avatar as well as they're used to help reconstruct the 3D shape because these points are used to help the software that was trained to understand the human physiology. Okay, so I'll make a couple more minor corrections before we give it a first look. All right, so that's not too bad. There's some corrections in the eyes yet to be done. But let's have a quick look to see at our first view of this avatar. Uh, also, to understand where the points should go, we have this guide on the side over here. But OK, so here we have a first view of this avatar. Not too bad. And as I move in, I can see a couple little places down here to make minor corrections. Now what these corrections will do is they both help define where it's going to pull image data for your your avatar's texture as well as helps the software grasp where is uh, your what is your actual face shape. That looks a little better. All right. 
Now if you watch this view, when it reloads, we'll see the 3D shape update. Okay, there you saw the shape change. That looks pretty good. Quick little review over here. Anything I want to make slight modifications to. Now clicking this means I want to move forward onto the next step. In the next step, we're going to have a series of slide bars that allow adjustments to the profile of the avatar as well as some other fine-tuning details. We like to call this our detail morphing interface. Okay, here we have the detail morphing interface and from this view the idea is you're able to make shape adjustments. We have a series of slide bars that are visible on uh, the left hand side. So in order to approximate my shape, I'll pull out my forehead a little bit. I'll expand the size of my nose as well as expand the bridge just slightly. And uh, my chin line a little bit thinner and then in the details portion I can adjust this is labeled Asian eyes it's more of a sheathed eye and uh, as most people age the skin beneath their eyebrows begins to fold over their eyelids so that's what this is doing this is pulling that forward uh, the first tired eyes slide bar it adds a slight bulge beneath the eyelid. You can see that moving in and out. It's rather subtle. I'll zoom in. Now I'm going to move the older tired eyes, which is the lower portion, just beneath the eye. You can see how that raises and lowers that portion. Mine are probably a little more like that. And then uh, smile lines adds a crease along the smile. And moving forward, I have a square jaw. So we'll pull that out a little bit. And I'll pitch my face forward and add my chin cleft. All right, all of these are details that are really hard to pull from a forward-facing photo. And then here, finally, we have a facial distortion, or it's like an overall skull distortion. Okay, uh, typically in the distortion area, a slight tweak to the width of the avatar helps because oftentimes a photograph has perspective distortion. And that looks fairly realistic. So I will save and bake this version. Now it's taking that shape, making it the permanent shape of the avatar. And here we have my avatar's head shape. And I'll select an eye color that's a little bit closer to my eye colors. And here we have basically created the basic avatar. So now at this point, we can take them into the avatar home and we can change the eye color again. We can add wig, ears, and other accessories. We can apply facial expressions. We can change how this avatar is lit. And we can export the avatar currently as OBJ JPEG or as Maya with a complete uh, Maya animation rig and uh, you go to the accessory store to purchase more uh, wigs, ears, and so on to help personalize your avatar. So that's what we have for creating your avatar and I hope you enjoy and uh, hope you enjoyed making a lot of avatars.